So we'll start with this. We're just going to fold it up. You know where you're headed. You know what you're looking for. You see ahead of how you're going to cut it all together and what the story is going to be. So this looks like a job of patience, but I'm not a very patient person at all. But what I am is tenacious. I know where I want to go. I know where I want to get. Jeffrey Rudell is a paper prodigy of sorts. His father worked at a paper mill, transforming trees into pulp. Jeffrey transforms paper into three-dimensional sculptures that often reflect nature. We were poor. I grew up on a, a farm in Michigan, so we didn't have a lot of money. But I remember making a fort one year, early part of summer, out of big cardboard tubes and pieces of corrugated cardboard tied and duct taped together. And it's a huge fort, like four or five or six rooms with big towers all around it. Even today in my studio, it's play. It's making things that make me happy, that I hope will make other people happy. He continued crafting paper as gifts. Then he went to a friend's holiday party. Finding myself poor, I decided to make a gift. So I made a little uh, box of ornaments. And for the ornament, um, for the card, I made a, a flower that I stuck on on the outside of a piece of paper. And very pretty, very three-dimensional. At the party, somebody saw this card and said, oh, that's very interesting. Could you, could you make some of that for me, but bigger? And I said, sure. That somebody turned out to be the head of visual merchandising for Tiffany. And in no time flat, I was working for Tiffany and Company making windows, which was great. And Jeffrey has been making a living, cutting, folding, and gluing paper ever since. He's even got a book printed on paper. Commercial clients want something that looks crafted. If something I make is sitting in a window at Tiffany, what's sitting in front of it is a $100,000 ring. It can't look like a $4 piece of paper behind it. It has to look like a $100,000 creation behind it. My job is to take something worthless, paper, and make it look like $100,000. And if you think making a living shaping paper is nuts, wait till you see his favorite creation. So I bought a bag of walnuts at a grocery store and I opened them all up very carefully and cleaned them out. And then I gold leafed the inside of all the walnuts. And then I put them back together and made a little hinge out of embroidery floss so you could open it up like a little treasure box. And inside I made a little tiny accordion book with a little poem on it. Essentially it said, thanks for taking a chance on me. You chose to try someone untried, it is true. You asked not what we'd done, but rather what can you do? This is a project I created with my nieces in mind. It's made out of this like crinkly glassine sort of paper and poppies have this beautiful sort of ruffle and the way to get that is you take a piece of glassine paper and you crunch it up in your hand and you crunch and crunch and then you turn it inside out and crunch it the other way. The lesson when I was trying to show my nieces how to make this was that you don't have to worry about perfection. That randomness, that's part of the perfection. Most artists strive to leave a legacy. Paper, like flowers, eventually wilt away. And Jeffrey is just fine with that. Paper does droop, it does bend, it does wilt. So a lot of the stuff I make, it'll last for a few months. But beyond that, it tends not to survive. It's ephemeral. That's paper. The thing I love about it is I take maybe $10 worth of paper, and a lot of time and some accumulated experience and skill and I turn that into something that I can then sell to someone for three or four thousand dollars. And that's pretty amazing because the part that I'm selling is my imagination. For Arts in the City, I'm Rainer Ramirez.